I'm going to make some soup today. This will not be vegetarian because I'm using poultry broth. So meat could be added to this later. Um, we get enough meat in our diet. What we don't get is vegetables, and we don't like vegetables. So we like them in soup. So I've got celery, and I've got a carrot, got a bunch of green onions, I've got a bunch of tiny potatoes that I won't have to do anything but just wash them and dump them. And then there's a lot of cauliflower and broccoli that I buy for the parrot that doesn't get eaten up before it starts to go. So I'll leave a section of that behind for the parrot and the rest will go in to the soup. And that leaves these bins almost empty. <laughs> also, I have two tomatoes right there. Now the thing with tomatoes, um, the how do you peel a tomato? Sure and heck, if you just start pulling on the skin, you're going to pull the tomato apart. What you do is you put that little slice in it so the skin will separate. Then you put it in a heat-proof bowl, something that can take some heat. And then you pour boiling water and you submerge them in boiling water. And you wait um, anywhere from a minute to five minutes or till you can touch the water. It really doesn't matter. But then when you pick them up, they just slip out of their skin. Yeah, so a lump of poultry fat. Uh, you can use any oil, any any oil that you normally would use to saute things, whether you're frying eggs or heating up some meat. Go ahead, use that. But remember, the less flavor the food ha the, the food going in has, the less flavor the food going out will have. Unless you are trying to create a food with one specific flavor, then you want all the ingredients to be mild except that one flavor. This is the poultry broth. Um, I recently made a great deal of stock and along with that came some broth. And I'm going to include all of this sediment because I know that's good food, but I think I'll add a little extra water to get it out. That sediment is remains of boiled bones, so you're adding bone marrow and calcium into the food, which is kind of the point of making stock. And we're off. So there you go, just a little bit of brown, a sort of translucency. They're more yellow than white and kind of seem to have a bit of translucency to it. So that makes them ready to go in the soup, and they'll just go directly into that soup. I often forget the salt. I really do. Let's say this soup, probably about uh, half a teaspoon, say, about a half a teaspoon of salt. Mmm, quarter teaspoon. I want to keep it light. And because I'm putting in a hot Thai red pepper, I will not be putting in pepper, black pepper. Also, the Thai red pepper can go in right now. I just haven't got it cut yet. A tip about herbs in soup. If you're using dried herbs, you really should be thinking about a recipe. It's very easy to put too much dried herbs into the food. For one thing, it's much more compact than fresh. Uh, for another, you need to use more than you do with fresh because the resinous oils are gone. And with fresh, um, you can use a lot more even though it has more flavor, you can use a lot more without overwhelming your soup because the fresh stuff is actually food as well. It's nutrition. It's adding vegetables to your soup. A huge part of flavor is not your taste buds or your olfactory. It's actually your body's response to the food. So in an uneducated palate, someone who has lived mostly off of um, highly processed and, and preserved foods, their body may not have that education and their first encounter with a nutritious food might not go as well as wanted. You, for instance, eat a food three times before you reject it. Give your body a chance to recognize that food and you may find yourself craving it. You'll certainly find it appealing when you smell it. As usual, I misjudged the volume of my vegetables and I had to upgrade to a bigger pot. So I, uh, I, I brought out a potato and I gave it a quick tap with a fork. And it's not soft, but neither is it raw. That makes it the perfect time to add the next stage of vegetables. The things that cook fairly fast but 
do need to be cooked through. And that's that bowl. And then when these are all, when the potatoes are soft and the broccoli is not quite mushy, then I will throw this in and that'll be a finished soup. It will not need further cooking. The tomatoes are better if they're raw. So I don't cook the tomatoes and herbs. I just dump them in at the end. Oh, this is going to be a stew. I think I'll add a little bit of potato starch to it at the end as well. And then it's going to thicken up and be a real genuine stew. The potatoes are now completely unyielding as you want them. You want them to just give when you ask it. And the very largest parts of cauliflower and broccoli have just a hint of crisp but are tender and pleasant to chew on. So you can cut them with your fork or your spoon, but your teeth still have a little bit of work left to do. And that's the state you really want it to be in. That means that it's time to throw in the tomatoes and herbs. And there they go. I'll give those a stir. And then the potato flour. So that's the tomatoes and herbs. That's the thing I like best about tomatoes is the color they bring. Look at all the color in this soup. Eating involves your eyes as much as it does your nose and mouth. The eyes make the appetite prime the belly. So now we have this potato flour. I'm going to try and stir it rapidly into the center. So I'll shove all of these big chunks up out of the way and uh, grab a different tool for this job I think. Okay, this time I have a whisk and I'm going to try and whisk the flour into the middle to prevent lumping. We don't use wheat flour here, but potato flour does a beautiful job with thickening. Oh yeah, that worked really well. There's no lumpy lumpy, not that you'd really be able to tell there was lumps. However, it's not as thick as I'd like it to be. Unlike flour, it, um, it won't thicken as it cooks. I need to add probably twice that again. So that's been simmering while I dropped things on the floor and then cleaned up after myself. And that tells me definitely it's not thick enough and it's not going to get thick enough. I need to add the extra starch. I'm trying to get the big lumps and chunks out of the way. And uh, I've got a scoop of potato flour here. But I'm going to whisk it in anyway. Break up those lumps as they hit the soup. That's two of those. And one more. One more seems wise. It's only potatoes. Just dried, ground up potato. That's all that is. Oh, there you go. Now I'm getting something thick. Thick and difficult to stir is what we're after. Oh, yes. Now that is a nice, rich stew broth. Yes. Look at that. It's more like gravy. That's what I wanted. Hot and ready to eat. Just a sample because I don't have a lot of appetite. It's the middle of the afternoon. It's coffee break, not meal time. I didn't put enough salt in. Doubling the salt would have been wise. A whole teaspoon would have worked. A little sprinkle with the salt shaker solves that. Hmm. It's a good way to get your vegetables.